Okay, hi. Um, can everybody hear me? I don't have any feedback on audio. And I have no chat. Okay, I guess you can hear me. So I will answer to do this. Um, easiest question that disappeared. Oh, there it is. 5.10 is the next LTS kernel. Um, that's easy. I picked the last one of the year, and this one will be in December 20th, I think. Um, so that's the last one. Um, 5.9 was big, and um, 5.10 is also big. <laughs> so yes, last one of the year. That was easy. Um, how do I keep up with the ever-growing list of patches for reviews? Um, we have scripts that if once a patch gets committed to Linus's tree, um, they pick up the patch and they um, let me know that it's there. And then because it's already been tagged for stable, um, I review it manually, submit it off to the build systems that I have, and gets applied and goes from there. So it's just a, we have a lot of backing scripts. Um, Sasha has a whole bunch of scripts that does auto. Um, selection of patches and that he digs through all the stuff that lands in Linus's tree and goes from there as well. So it is a lot. Um, we're averaging about 30 to 35 patches a day that get merged overall um, every single day if you aggregate them all. So it's a lot, um, but we can do it pretty fast. Um, I wrote a blog post about how I do a lot of this stuff and how it's automated through MUT and our scripts and all our scripts are public and MUT stuff is public. So it's pretty easy. Um, other ones, this is going upside down. Have I tried switching to the Eric email client yet? No, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't looked at it, but works good. I was waiting for Drew to say, take the time and see if it works for me or not. Uh, is there any tips, arguments for to convince other level management to contribute? Um, it's very simple. It will save you time and money if you contribute. If you want to waste time and you want to waste money, you do not contribute. Um, you, everybody has a fork of the tree because they have things they needed to do. And um, you get involved by pushing the stuff upstream. That means you don't have to maintain it anymore. You get more intimately involved. It actually has been documented. IBM and Intel have publicly written up um, articles about this. I think even um, Harvard Business Review has written an article saying it will save you time and money to work upstream. Um, it's that simple. So if your management has lots of money to burn and time to burn, wonderful, do it. It does take a first hit of the first time you get involved and get your patches upstream, but over time, it is proof that it's faster and cheaper. Um, these are upside down. Well, I think of the discussion that the email patch methodology is holding back contributions. Um, that is not what's holding back contributions. We have over 200 new developers show up every single release. So every three months, we have 200 new developers. Um, we do not have a problem of new developers right now. Um, yes, it is hard to get your email client to work and whatnot, but we have it documented really well. And as proof, 200 brand new people show up every month. Whether that could be 400 brand new people or not, maybe we do need to do that. But And we are working on things like that. We have tutorials. We have posts on how to do this. Um, we've been working on lore.kernel.org to make things easier that way. Um, but our main bottleneck is maintainers, is reviewing. I average, I just looked over 700 patches a week that I have to review, um, and that is our bottleneck right now. So um, help review so, um, patches, help other people. If you want to submit a patch, there's no reason why you shouldn't also be reviewing other people's patches. It's just like with music. You don't start off writing music only. You start off reading music and criticizing music. Same thing with programming. You should be reading and, and reviewing other people's code as well. Some subsystems, I know SCSI require this, that you have to review other people's code. 
And I think that's a good idea. So help out the maintainers. That's a really good idea. Um, dum, dum, dum. Um, how does the kernel community interact with OSHW movement? I have no idea what OSHW movement is. Sorry. Uh, if somebody wants to um, answer that, I will. Or type that out, I will. I get to dismiss these questions. Um, Brian here. Um, does a kernel memory have memory manager for huge pages? Yes, it does. We have huge page support. <laughs> so we have a file system for it. We have huge page support. It's been there for 15, 20 years. So yes, we have huge page support. Um, I do not an MM person, so I'm not the person to ask about that. Um, Consideration to be taken when implementing runtime PM callbacks versus system-wide system resume callbacks. There's a whole document about all of this. Um, in the documentation tree on runtime power management, you should do runtime power management. You should not mess with system-wide suspend resume callbacks um, because you want, to, you want to knock off the hardware that is not being used at that moment in time. It saves you overall power. Um, use that. Um, that's what everybody's switching over to. There's a document on how to do it. It's in the documentation directory. Um, it's much more finer grained. It works much better. Um, please do that. Uh, somebody just told me off ban that the OSHW is the Open Source Hardware Association. How do we? Okay, so I don't know how the kernel community interacts. Remember, the kernel community is four thousand people in five hundred different companies. I do not know all of them. Um, I'm sure there's some people making sure that Linux works on that hardware at Facebook and other companies that work with that. So talk to them. Um, bum, 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 bum. what else is that? Do oh, is it? thank you, Drew. Um, everybody's dismissing that. Um, Google is pushing towards a GKI kernel image. Um, yes, do I think it will encourage mobile vendors to contribute upstream? It already has, we have proof of that. I have seen patches from Samsung and MediaTek and Qualcomm pushing their core changes to the kernel and drivers upstream. You will see it in a lot of driver subsystems. Have already got broken up on um, IRQ, not IRQ. Um, there's been a number of subsystems that have broken up into being modules now, instead of loadable, that they can be loadable modules. Uh, we have patches from MediaTek grabbing from a Qualcomm tree, um, sending them through an Intel maintainer <laughs> right now. So we have lots of active development happening right now by all these SOC vendors and chipset vendors and phone vendors. Um, I work with Google a little bit on this stuff, just making sure that the LTS kernels get merged together. So yes, we've already seen it contributing upstream very well. Um, the problem, it, it, will SOC mobile vendors put everything in their modules and not care about upstream? Um, everybody does that for all distros. <laughs> so that's nothing new. Um, I'm sure it will continue to happen as well, but there's only so much you can do in a module um, by virtue of what it is. And again, it saves companies time and money when they merge stuff upstream. So if they merge stuff upstream, they save time and money and they get involved. And that's the main goal there. It's working pretty well so far. Um, let's see, GKI is going to come out sometime next year. So let's see how it works by then. Um, it'll be a while before phones are out on it. But we already have proof that it is helping. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. What's my advice for Linux kernel mentees? Oh, hi. This is one of my, my mentees from this summer. Um, how can they be useful after mentorship? They can um, talk to me, but they can keep doing the same things that they've been doing. And um, actually, so, um, there's been a number of them um, that I've been trying to work with to figure out what subsystem they want to work on or what they want to specialize in and go what for there. We have one mentor, one mentee this summer who actually was offered to be a maintainer of a subsystem. It was a little bit of tag, you're it, you touched it last. Um, and they were very surprised, but they are taking up the, that task right now and doing quite well at it. Um, so just get involved and find it something that you're interested in. If you're not interested, you still want to do generic stuff. Again, please do the SYZ bot stuff, other stuff. Um, we have lots and lots of tasks to do. So keep on going that. Um, what is the roadmap regarding Linux as the RTOS? It's been that way for 10, 15 years already, the RT patch, we're real time deterministic um, operating system. Um, Preempt RT is, or the real-time stuff is almost all merged. It's not quite there yet. Um, talk to, I'm sure there's a talk about real-time at this conference, so go ask those developers. It is getting whittled down into smaller and smaller bits, but it's almost all there. 
And there's a talk at Plumbers about what to do when it is all merged in and how do we do testing and integration and stuff. Um, go back and look at the Linux Plumbers Conference. Um, talks about that for details if you're curious. Um, but yeah, it's there. You can download it and run. Um, we saw Linux running on laser welding robots a decade ago, if not older than that. Um, they do John Deere, they drive tractors, they do lots of other stuff. Linux has been a real-time operating system for a very long time. So, and I ran out of questions. Um, what's my take on that? Oh, there we go. That's better. Uh, Rust in the kernel. I don't think people have noticed. <laughs> so uh, the Rust developers talked to me and Alina's 12, no, a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. And we said, sure, wonderful. Let's see how it works. Um, and they've been actively working to try and get something that will work since then. There's some proof of concepts, which is cool. Um, if you look at the plumbers conference, the Rust developers and the kernel developers, we talked. And um, yeah, it looks nice if they can come up with something that will work well. That's great. Um, right now, you still have to run like the bleeding edge Rust compiler of every day, nightly builds. Um, there's some interesting interactions that's going to happen when you get with object lifespans and the C objects we have versus the Rust objects. It'll be interesting to see how they handle that. But they're working on it. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, it's just another language. That's fine. Um, so be great. Um, but if you're more if you're interested, in go look up the Plumbers Conference. And there's a whole talk. And there's a summary of it on the next weekly news as well. So that's really good. How much time do I devote to kernel newbies? The IRC channel or the mailing list? The IRC channel I'm on, and if there's questions I can see the answer, I'll answer it. Uh, the mailing list, if there's questions that come by and I know what to answer, I'll answer it. So it's just like one of my normal emails that I get in my inbox. I get about a thousand emails I go do something with every day. That's just one of them. So it's interesting. Um, what am I working on now, projects-wise? I'm cleaning up the DebugFS interface, getting it um, smaller and more robust. If you look over time, I've slowly evolved the API to make it harder to use ROM. Um, and then there's a bunch of um, make things easier to use with the USB messages um, sub um, functions as well as that. I worked with some interns on that. Um, getting that, the USB APIs, some of them are very easy to use incorrectly. And it's a bad API. You want an API to be very hard to use wrong. So we changed them and tweaked them a little bit. And we'll evolve and move the whole kernel over to the new APIs over time. So lots of little tiny evolutionary stuff. And that's what I'm working on. It's fun. When I get bored, I can write new patches. Oh, and I also have the read file syscall, which I keep posting every once in a while. The patches are public um, to move open, read, close into one syscall. Interestingly, it doesn't always, it isn't always faster <laughs> on a lot of workloads because um, it's lost in the noise. It's kind of interesting. Syscalls are not slow. They're fast, but they're, they've slowed down a little bit, but they're still not that slow as you would think they were. Linux in a safety critical environment. Um, anybody who's ever flown a plane has been controlled by Linux in the past decade. So it's in a safety critical environment today. Um, it runs the telecom systems. It runs this, uh, the um, stock markets. It runs satellites. The um, It's been in the... Uh, balancing uh, thing that keeps super mega yachts from tipping over. So that's a safety critical environment. It's been there for like 15 years. Um, so Linux has been in the safety critical environments and it's been automotive also as well in the head units for a long time, um, not in the head units. Um, I don't know about where else it's going, but it's getting there for other parts of the car. Nobody wants to write an operating system. They just want to write applications to solve their problems. So yeah, we're there. Um, there are certifications and other on paperwork that people are working on, but that's independent of Linux itself. I have three minutes left. OK. Um, bum, 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 bum. Which kernel feature turn my beard that gray? All of them. <laughs> it's just me getting old. And look, I have no hair either, but I've not had hair a long time. 
Um, da, 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 da. March 1st, LTS is security updates, staying on LTS. Uh, what is a good way to convince customers updating ahead of LTS or latest stables? A way, way to pick. Um, cherry picking always fails. I will guarantee you. I have audited lots of devices. I did a famous talk where I showed four brand new phones that were bought within their latest top of the line ones, and it was trivial to root them all. Um, I did it on stage as a fun talk, um, and it was rooted with a patch that had said, "This is a fix. Here's the problem. Here's the reproducer in the commit itself." And people who were cherry picking missed it. Um, Google's published a bunch of results about how taking the LTS fixes 90% um, of all the CVEs before they're even done. The other 10% of the CVEs or bug, security bugs were in out of street code that was in their kernels. So every single thing that they were notified of being a security issue was fixed before they even knew about it in, this, in the LTS releases. Um, Google's now requiring this for new devices that they pick up the LTS releases. Um, again, cherry picking does not work. There's no reason to do that. Just take the whole thing and do that because we fix known security issues every single week and we fix tons of unknown security issues every single week. Again, we're fixing 30 a week for 30 to 35 a day, keeping on top of that and determining what is and is not a security thing is impossible. So just take them all. So again, I've given presentations on it. You can look at what I gave last year and the year before and just do that. What do I think about open source security foundation? I do not know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I don't know what they're doing. I think it's a replacement for what CII was doing. I am not involved directly, and so I can't tell you what to do there. Um, I can point you to the right people to talk to Case Cook. He's involved. Um, so Alexander, talk to him. Um, I have notebooks coming out um, about kernel development. The Linux device driver 4 is not going to happen, <laughs> so don't worry about that. Um, just look at all the source code we have today. And the ideas are still in the old books are still there. Um, bum, 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 bum. What else do I have? They did not recover. They did not reconsider. O'Reilly did not do that. And they laid off all their editors. So I doubt that will ever happen. Why is the kernel community not a friend of DBTK? I don't think you know that the same developers are part of the kernel community and part of DBTK. So why are they? They are friends. They're the same people. That's an odd question. Um, thoughts about the collaboration process with Intel, and I will not, I'll just do these last ones, questions. Um, disclosure process, Intel is not doing well with disclosures. Let's put it that way. I'm not happy. <laughs> it's not getting better. Um, as proof, the Bluetooth problem was Intel. It didn't, wasn't disclosed properly. Anyway, I won't get into that. Um, stable maintainership, more maintainers, bigger team, bigger team be counterproductive. Is our Sasha and I going too slow? <laughs> 35 batches a day. If other people want to help that are active kernel maintainers, I'm glad to take the help. We have a lot of things that would do that. Um, I have a list of tasks to do if you want to help. Um, that's about it. Um, the context regarding Rust was in the context of drivers. We'll be using core codes. Let's see it actually work in drivers first. Come on. What do, you, what do you want us to say? <laughs> How would it be used in core code if it can't even work in a driver? That's a leaf node on the tree as far as source code and not requiring, nobody's building on top of that. Baby steps, please. And the current roadmap for IOU ring, um, talk to Jens. I think he's probably giving a talk. Um, it's great stuff. It works really, really fast and it's fun to use. So talk to Jens and he's given, he re read his emails and read the patches that are coming out from him. He does a lot of good stuff. And I think that is it. So thank you very much. If anybody's said follow on questions, just email me. Like I said, I got about a thousand emails a day. Might as well have interesting ones. Thanks a lot.